Hi guys. Hi. So we're back here. Uh, we're on week three, and there are some really adorable. You saw the sneak peek last week of those cute typewriters. Um, so you did hear me write typewriters. You actually get to stitch three of those. So um, or four, if you make a mistake. Four, if you make a mistake, and we'll talk about that maybe in a minute or so. So the first thing that you're going to do for this week. So here's the row. I'm gonna kind of slide you down there so you can see these little notes that are at the top you actually have a choice of six different um, designs and you're gonna just pick your favorite three so um, I actually did pretty much just what the pictures were showing I didn't really get too creative because again I was trying to make it look as much like the picture as possible for you guys so I pretty much did that um, but whatever ones that you like the best by all means do that when you are stitching those I did um, use black for the words again in my bobbin so that they came out nice and crisp. Um, and we might have mentioned a second ago that, you know, maybe I made four. Um, so in the second one for this guy here, I stitched the heart twice just so that it was a little bolder. And I do think that that made a little bit of difference. I just wanted it to show up a little bit better. So that was um, my typewriters, my choice for the first step and you're going to literally stitch those on water soluble stabilizer so that you're not going to have anything left over after the fact you have anything you want to add you want to talk sewing um yeah i just wanted to point out i didn't do mine on water soluble i did mine on that heavyweight tear weight mm -hmm. and it all teared away just fine so if by chance you are at home and you're doing you this have. late and you don't have that tear away stabilizer will work just fine um, on yours and, and you can pull most of that stuff off and you won't you won't really see it So and, and honestly, you're not gonna see the back anyways So even if you all only thing you have is like no show sure, back sure what it'll still work It'll so still work. Yeah, not the end of the world on any of those things mm -hmm. um, And just as a little reminder that is white felt that was in your embellishment kits. So you have the white felt um, There are multiple pieces in there. You actually you're gonna have big chunks of them left so I, I did condense a little bit and I did two with one piece um, just because you just never know when you're going to have to make an additional square and be really glad that you did that. Yeah, yeah. So, so. if you're doing the embroidery version, this is the first time that you've used the felt. Mm -hmm. um, if you're doing the sewing version, you've already used a little bit of yours. So With the cameras, right? With the cameras, mm -hmm. yep. So speaking of the sewing version, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, just about everything that you're doing here is going to be the same that we're talking about doing it by machine embroidery. The difference is, is that you're obviously going to be hand embroidering this or using your sewing machine. Um, when you do the typewriter um, block, I, can I borrow your... You can. I didn't do my homework. Uh, Snake bee. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, is this the next one? It is. Okay, so see on the bottom here, uh, she has drawn uh, lines on hers, and she's used a marking pen that um, will... Uh, Heat away. Heat away. Yep, so those are the friction some, markers. Whatever marking pen you want to use. So when you are doing your three typewriter um, blocks here, for, these are the sewing tips. Um, the instructions remind you to mark your center um, and then you're going to take a, a line and you're going to go two inches from the top of the block. So figure out which is going to be the top of your block and which is going to be the bottom because that'll be important. Um, and then you're going to draw a line and then you are going to take um, your felt uh, typewriter papers that you're making here, your cute little typewriter things, and you are going to line the bottom edge of that um, centrally on that two inch line from the top that you drew. Uh, you can pin it or use the Kimberbell tape in place and then you're going to just stitch about a quarter of an inch from the bottom of that to keep it in place. <coughs> what Excuse you me. don't want to happen is you don't want this um, to be flopping around while you're trying to stitch the other thing. Um, and then you will have your um, your typewriter your piece here, piece your there. gray piece. And then once you have stitched the white piece down, you're going to, this is definitely, you want to fuse the gray down um, and then do the stitching around there. That'll hold that piece in place so that it stays out of your way while you're doing yep. that. Um, and then everybody is going to be trimming their blocks down a little bit later. It's really important to make sure that you get this out of the way because I'm going to just flip your blocks around. You can see that they and stick they up, up. Um, yep. off the top. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to go <laughs> right through there. <laughs> nope. That would be a little bit of a mistake. So, Absolutely. Um, but there really isn't anything else special that you will be doing besides that. Just make sure that you're marking the two inches down and you're putting that piece down there and you really do want to sew there. Don't yeah. just pin it or tape it um, because it you're does be get, covering it up. Too, yeah, so. and you'll you'll go right over top of that. But it, it does um, it does add a little bit of bulk there. So if it's stitched down, um, it'll be much better in the long run for you. Cool. 
So as far as doing that embroidery um, in the machine, um, we've talked, if you have come in already and picked yours up, I talked to you about um, what mistake to not make, because obviously I made it for you, so um, you guys don't have to, so you can learn from my mistake. You know how we get up from the machine and either go to the bathroom, start dinner, cut something else or whatever yeah. while it's stitching? Well, that's what I did, and I came back and didn't recheck the directions before I moved forward, and I trimmed um, the black fabric before I stitched everything onto the black fabric. There's a lot of stitches going into that, and it just, I shouldn't have glued it because it was a much more visual um, I was trying to see if I could save it. It didn't work. No, it, it really didn't. It work. really does pull so, in. So um, you guys probably can't really see, but this side here, I ended up gluing it in place, um, and I used stilettos and tweezers and everything. I even taped it. <laughs> everything I could imagine. Um, I even put a little extra piece of fabric in there to see if I could make it. Nothing worked. So don't do that. Okay. Um, learn. Learn from my error. So what's going to happen is um, you're going to get the carriage placed and the color, whether it's the pink or whatever, um, and you'll get that set. You can cut those, no problems there. Um, and then it's going to show you where to place the black. So this is one piece of black fabric that's going to go onto that um, placement line. And then it's gonna tack it down. Do not cut. cut. Okay? <laughs> it does say that. It, but it does, it attention. actually says that in the instructions for those of you who read them, which obviously I did not that time around. Um, and the crazy thing is this was black too. I had already done one successfully. So <laughs> get carried away. We get in uh, We get excited. Right? And you know, we've been doing applique forever and right. that, you know, that's a normal step. So mm -hmm. I just It's like it. drive mode in the car, right? You drive right by where you're looking cuz you're just in you're the just zone. driving. Yeah. yeah, so you know, we know exactly what we're doing all the time. All the time. <laughs> I don't make mistakes. I did this on purpose just mm -hmm. so I could show y'all, right? Absolutely. Yes. Totally. Yes. So once you have that black square tacked down, it's going to do a, a tack down stitch here and then a tack down stitch here. What you're going to do is take that white plasticky looking stuff. Um, you're going to have it, it's about, you know, yay by six inches, mm -hmm. something like yeah, that. Maybe like and six it, by it, ten or something. It looks like plastic. Okay, what that is, is color black topping. And what you're going to do with that is literally cover up that black piece of fabric with that. And go ahead and tape that down. Um, you don't want your fingers in there. There's lots and lots of stitches going on. So go ahead and tape that down. Use that Kimberbell tape or whatever it is that you have um, to use and tape down those edges. What's going to do is it's gonna stitch all of these guys here and then all of your keys and your space bar. And then you're going to take off the excess. Um, one other little tip, um, there are a lot of little jump stitches between these guys here. Um, I would trim those before you go to rip because it, it kind of blocks the ripping process if you leave them there. Mm -hmm. So trim out your little jump stitches um, in between the little, what are, I don't, the little strike bars. I don't know what they're actually called. It's mm -hmm. been a long time since I used a typewriter. Um, but anyways, Daisy um, what? Daisy wheel. The daisy wheel? Daisy, he says it's the daisy wheel. Cause Hayden knows everything. So. Hayden knows everything, so I'm gonna go with it. So when you're cutting. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyways, once you have that, you can go ahead and remove the tape and then it just tears away. Um, those little tweezers work really good. They really do. Those um, precision points right, to get, get in into those to spots. those. Even tearing, it'll probably leave little bits of pieces. And I just tucked one of those precision points underneath and whoop, yep. and it came right out. Piece of cake. So, do you like the sound effects? Whoop. Yep. Yep. That's how it went. Just like that. So, um, they really make a kind of a 3D. I don't know if you guys can really see that through video, but they really pop off. Mm -hmm. um, and with that white behind the white thread, it just pops mm -hmm. really, really good. Even when you don't have the quilt batting on the back, you do really get a three-dimensional look mm -hmm. of the um, of the, the little typewriter buttons. It, it's so. it's really cool. It is. So she had hers um, last week. So you guys, that, that was your sneak peek last week. So um, those are really, that's what you're going to do. And then lots of satin stitching um, to tack down all of the other pieces. Um, threads, you know, just kind of use it however you want. You can use darker on the outside. You can go lighter, whatever vibe you're feeling that day, go with it. Yep. And um, then we trim those down. So once I talk about this other block today, we're going to show you guys how to use the orange pop rulers because you're probably getting to that point if you haven't already started trimming that you've got this stack of stuff that you're ready to start to cut down to the appropriate sizes. The last square that is um, in this month's row or week, I don't know. They're not all rows, week. so maybe just week. Week. So this is feels like a month. It really kind <laughs> of does. 
Um, so this is the last one. So um, if you notice, there are accent uh, stitches around. So whatever you did for the mason jar, and it looked like they were, it was you know tipped and the hearts were falling out, they're actually going to be up here and they're gonna be falling into this envelope in the layout of the quilt. So I highly recommend that you match whatever you did in that other block so that they coordinate. So, um, I don't really have. So, so I highly recommend that you match. <laughs> <laughs> don't mind that. Um, so, so you want to um, match that that tack down stitch because just like before, whatever you tack that down with is what's going to show um, in your final block. So this was a pretty straightforward week of stitch outs. There wasn't anything super crazy. Had I actually followed the directions, I wouldn't have had any problems. Um, but you know, we're, unfortunately y'all have found out I'm not perfect either. So we're human, we do things, but this way you guys can learn from my mistake and not do that same thing. So fortunately I might have a small stash of fabric at home and I was able to make another block. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very, very cool there. All right, so. In your pattern, um, and I have to be really careful on what I do here because there's more than here than you guys are supposed to see, um, but in each one, it's going to show you a kind of square at the end and it's going to be highlighted what you're going to cut that down with. So in there, it says what size orange pop ruler, or if you don't have the orange pop ruler, what size it's going to be cut down to. So the way that these orange pop rulers work, um, um, you know, I didn't get that far out. I, you showed up, so I, I started yakking instead. It's your Sorry, fault. I know, totally. <laughs> so, um, in these orange pop rulers, you have an arrow, uh, north, south, east, and west, and you're going to line those up with whatever you have used for a centering mark. So sometimes our embroidery covers up our centering mark, and I literally will measure. So when I was cutting those, I had, I didn't want to draw another centering mark, so I made sure I had an inch above each one so that, that I'll be um, nice and even. I just used a secondary ruler and made sure that my spacing was was right on where I wanted to be. And I used another ruler. If you have a line, which the blocks that I'm gonna show you on actually do still have that line on there, um, you'll align that up with the arrows because those are the centering arrows. So on the back, you have these cool little grips and that helps everything from sliding once you have started. You do have to put those grips on yourself. Yes, they do they not come pre already pre-gripped. Um, so you can decide where you want them, how many you want on there, all of that good jazz. Um, the label is just my special little. Because they all look the same. Because they do all look the same. And we don't have a set, full set of both of them here. So I have brought mine in here. So I labeled them all. So I actually went home with them. It's a crazy concept, right? Um, but you'll notice this is the fancy part about these rulers. So um, these guys little they're gonna allow you to cut past the edge with your rotary cutter. Um, a normal ruler is obviously just rectangle. You don't have the ability to go past the cutoff line there. So that's what allows that all to work. I may, I think I mentioned um, last week when we were talking about it, I do find that it's easier if you also take the second biggest one and line that up. So once you get the first one positioned, why don't we move the camera so you can do Why it? Why don't we do that? It'll yes. make a little more sense if you are actually seeing that. So we're gonna All shift right. positions here. So um, if you're getting nauseous easily, um, don't look for half a second. All right. I don't know if that's, is that gonna work? I think that kind of works. How about if we move it back just a little? How Sorry guys. It? Does that work? Where's the, where's your camera? Okay. There we, there we go. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so I have two different sizes. Um, they are written right at the bottom. It says cut size six and a half by eight and a half, finished size six by eight. The other one on the outside, it says that it's eight and a half by ten and a half. So you can see here, and if you guys are paying attention, this is part of Love Notes. So this is your preview. I have already started on um, next week's blocks. So what we're going to do is we're going to set that. One of the things that I have found that makes this a little bit easier is that your actual background piece is a lot of times the size of the uh, the ruler that you're going to use. So um, right here I can see is my arrows and I am pretty darn close to lined up. And I am following to those arrows to make sure that my 
crosshair that I drew is still there. Now, again, if you've stitched over that crosshair, you can use some other things. For instance, your beautiful ruler. So I can do this and you can almost see that in frame and I can make sure that I am completely straight across the top, which it you know, looks pretty darn on the money. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Yeah, you can also do you set you can set it here to help you with and your visual. Exactly. So you can use that as your center line to line up with the points of your ruler. Once you have everything happily in place, and by the way, these are quilter select rulers. They're the bomb. If you don't have this little guy, you need to pick that one up. It is um, got a grip on the back so that they don't slide on your fabric. So it makes everything so easy to cut. Um, for instance, those wonderful X's and O's, <laughs> um, if you had something like that, it would um, absolutely, yep, I knew I was going to move that. I want to slide this up a little bit. So again, you know, don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> it's going to be one of those weeks, I think. The batting um, makes it a little bit. The batting won't, it doesn't want to slide. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so this one is the six and a half by eight and a half, which is what it's telling me to cut. This one here is just going to give me a little bit more to hang on to so that I don't have to slice my finger off when I'm cutting. It just gives me a wider surface to hold everything in place. You do not want to use your large 60, um, not this one. You want to use your standard 45. The reason being is you need that blade to go past that marking so that you actually cut all the way around cool thing is is if you miss a corner um which i tend to do because i'd rather cut a little shy than absolutely uh, put a dent in my blade by hitting the ruler on a repeated uh i don't like to do that so um i will show you how to fix that because i can more than almost guarantee almost that guarantee that i'm going to miss a corner somewhere right. so you're going to place the blade if you are left-handed guess what guys it just goes the other way. Doesn't matter, okay? So this will work for everybody. We're just going to put that blade all the way back in the notch. So you see I'm behind where I want it to actually cut. And I am going to use that side. So I've cut this whole piece right here. Now I don't want to pick it all up. I'm just going to use my rotary mat and I'm going to turn it to cut the next side. That way nothing is shifting. Again, I'm going to come all the way back into that notch as far as I can, and I'm going to go right into the notch on the other end. So what's happening is I'm actually cutting into that edge line so that I'm not getting past it. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. All right, two more cuts. One, and it's not actually using the rotary feature, but it's okay. All right, so once I have that, I can take these both away. So just so that you guys can see, um, if you have come to a Kimberbell event, you would have gotten one of these, if you came to a two-day, one of these really nice orange bags. And you'll notice that all of the square ones fit really nice. The only one that doesn't fit really, really well is this last large rectangle. Um, you have probably seen some patterns out on the internet where they cut the bottom of the bag right here, add a little bit of fabric to make that hold all of these, and it's a really nice way to store all of these. I don't travel with them all that much, so I'm not overly concerned with it, so this works really well for me. And they have their own little special hook in this bag in my sewing room, so everything is right where it's supposed to be. All right, so as we're going to, so you can see I have just a little notch that's not there, and Maybe everybody does that. I don't know. Do you do that? I actually use the smaller rotary. You use this. I was gonna. I, I was gonna play it with that. Here. <laughs> it's it's here somewhere, and I was gonna show you guys that. So there's also a little. What is that? That one's 15. Yes. A little 15 blade. It's about yay big. Um, that would definitely get all the way in there. So you can see, I have a very easy line to follow here. All I gotta do is just notch that and it's coming out and you can see I have a perfect corner there. So it's not like I have miles and miles to go. I just can tap that in and I'm good to go. And I finish those all off. And then I have my beautiful square, except I don't think that's how I was supposed to cut this square, but that's okay. I'll deal with that later. <laughs> um, 
I think this one was supposed to be right on the bottom line, but that's all right. I will restitch that later, <laughs> but I'm not gonna cut that one. All right, so um, this is very, very easy to use. Of course, knife always safety, close always blade. close your blade. Um, and you can see how simple that was, and I have the size square that is going to fit in there. Um, I did, again, use um, the Ultra Soft in there, so you, I do have that pre-quilted, and it's got a little bit of, of poofy in there. Mm -hmm. Not a ton, just a little bit, um, but it cuts through all of those layers, piece of cake with no problem. Mm -hmm. So if you are, um, some people are a little bit nervous about actually cutting. Um, you can actually use a pen as well. So you can Ooh. use one of your... Um, <laughs> what you, what you loosen? <laughs> this guy. Sorry. Ah, okay, sorry. So you could also use your favorite heat marking pen mm -hmm. um, and trace along the inside of those lines. Yep. So that's not a permanent fix at first. Um, then you can verify that you're cutting where you need to be, um, and then you can just use your regular rotary blade yep, absolutely. afterwards. absolutely. It's not that you can't do this cut with a regular blade. What you would do is I would say, okay, if this was supposed to be six and a half, I would need three and a half inches to this side of the line, and three, I'm sorry, three and a quarter inches to this side of the line, and three and a quarter to that side of the line, and slice and dice. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you can't. This just makes it so much easier, and there's no guesswork. Um, you can make sure that it looks visually appealing, that you're centered before you cut instead of after you take the ruler off and you go. Crap. Oh, that's not quite what I wanted to do. And unfortunately, that happens a lot when you're doing it just by measurement purposes. Mm -hmm. For some reason... It's hard to visually... Uh, it's math. Right. Well, and, <laughs> and you're, no, you're moving a rotary cutter, and some are six, some are six and a half, and it's easy to cut on the wrong side. It is. And, um, you know, it's easy to make a block that's bigger or smaller, but it's really hard really to make hard a smaller to put block it back on. bigger. And then you have to like, get creative and for start instance, teasing. I can't put you that can't back. You can't put that inch back <laughs> I on. I can't put that back on, so... Always yeah. read the instructions. Well... This was there for the purpose of showing you guys sure, how to yes. use it. So that that's irrelevant. Perfect. And I might be wrong, too. It might have been a different block. I just have a feeling that that post was supposed to be at the bottom. A lot of the, their posts are... I think the are... posts are supposed to be at the bottom of the block for that one, but that's okay. Yes. Just one more block to stitch. And these were actually super easy. Yeah. These went together really yeah. fast. Um, so so. Uh, maybe we should... Should we address the mailing thing just so... Yes. Um, so um, we apologize, first of all, if you thought we were mailing you something uh, and you haven't received it yet. Um, we only originally had three people that sent us an address and said, please mail me this stuff here, which is what we had requested um, at the beginning if you wanted it mailed. So again, I do apologize if that communication somehow got missed with you. Um, if you would like something mailed and it has not yet been mailed, um, those three people probably know who they are already. So if you wanted that mailed, um, please just shoot us an email and say, can you send mail me weeks two, three, and four? I'm gonna pick up five whatever just send me what you want me to mail and where you want me to mail it to in an email so that i have a physical piece i can put with that stuff right we, and know exactly we really what's... have no issue mailing it out not um, at all we don't need you guys to bring stamps we're happy to take right. care of it we just need to know ahead of time yep. that you want it to be mailed um and please understand that once it, it is in the mail system unfortunately uh, the mail has been a little slower than normal lately so um you know we are at the mercy of the post office once it leaves here i can't begin to tell you um how soon it will get to you so i do apologize um if it's taking longer uh, we are trying to follow all the rules on our end and not sending things out earlier i know a couple of you had said someone so already has week four and i'm like oh that's not right. So yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, um, we're actually following the rules on that one. So I'm, I apologize ahead of time for that. Um, but uh, the big picture is very, very cute. And it is very cute. And um, we are so happy that everybody is doing this with us. Um, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. So um, we've actually enjoyed this. I have to admit, I really didn't want to do another yeah. Facebook Live. Um, but this has been fun. I might actually do one without my partner in crime at some point for some things too, yeah. so. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been good. It's it's definitely been good for us uh, to get over uh, some of our You know, all this new stuff. technology of how you actually need to get things out into the world, it's a whole new ball of wax for us too. So, um, you know, it's I know it's different for all of you watching this instead of coming in here and learning um, on a face-to-face -face basis. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we are really glad that you guys are taking this ride with us and it's been a lot of fun. I have absolutely loved every block that I've stitched for this quilt. It is so cute. I can't wait to get it all put together mm -hmm. and show you the finished product, which is coming up. It feels like we're on past week four or week three, that we should be at least on week four at this point, doesn't it? It does. It, it's kind of like, oh, 
It's only Tuesday. It's only Tuesday. <laughs> so um, thank you again for tuning in. I'm sorry we weren't quite as entertaining this week. Yeah. Um, it's been a nut, nut house in here as usual. So It has. Um, so. I have been out of the shop, and I'll probably be out of the shop for the for majority more of this days. week. Yep. Um, so so. Uh, I do check in on the Facebook page, though, so um, it, you know I haven't stopped doing that. Um, if you guys have uh, questions or suggestions, uh, please feel free to email us or call us or yep, leave a message underneath this. Um, you know, we do check them and, and we do get back to you. Um, so, uh, yep. yeah. And if there's something that you would like to see in a Facebook Live video that maybe we haven't done or we haven't thought about it, um, or, you know. hey, can you do it again? Yes. Or yeah, whatever yeah, happens please. to be. Yeah, give so. us, you know, let us know what you're looking for because, again, we're, it's all new to us as well. Mm -hmm. um, but the store, I haven't been here in a couple of days. The store looks really good. We've been working hard you in your absence. working really hard. Yes, yes. we really have. So um, just to note, um, Sarah here is the person who is answering most of those Facebook messages. Occasionally I pop on there and look, but I'm kind of a once a monther instead of a, at least once a day or -er. yeah. so um, anything that you are getting answered through Facebook is coming from Sarah. So just FYI for the next few days, she won't be in shop. So she's answering without necessarily the knowledge of maybe what's going on in here or if something has come in and that kind of stuff too. So um, just bear with us for a couple more days on that and um, we'll get back to normal. But just so that you guys are aware, she's doing that on her own time and, and answering you at midnight or whatever it is. When Well, not midnight. She sleeps at midnight. I'm usually asleep at midnight. I'm not, but mm -hmm. she is. I, I, so. it, but it, it could happen at 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning. That's I'm, absolutely when I'm up. And I'm not. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So um, just keep that in mind. So yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's. We have absolutely adored all of the blocks so far. Mm -hmm. And um, you got a little bit of a sneak peek for next week, but I got to tell you that the last couple blocks are really cute. And I can't wait to show you. Yeah. So we'll see you guys real soon. Please let us know. Um, give Call the store, 734-663-3033. If you have any questions, shoot us an email. Um, or message, or message Sarah on Facebook. That's so. right, yep. All right, you guys have a great day. Bye. Take care.